Now this is going to be demonstrating the uh, clamping of the uterine body, placing your ligatures, including a circumferential and a transfixing. So what we have here, this is going to be your uterine body. We've got the bifurcation of the uterine horns going cranially. There's your bifurcation, there's your uterine body, and here's your cervix. Now we won't get this much exposure of our cervix in a real animal, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And so, as I said, we always wanna clamp distal to the cervix, which means further out of the body, further away from the blood supply. Our first clamp should be at least a, milli or a centimeter away from the cervix. And your second clamp should be at least five millimeters away from that. And then lastly, your third clamp. Okay. So we'll leave those there. And you can place your clamps in alternative fashion so that they come in from two different directions, however you're more comfortable. You're gonna be using your assistant to help you with these clamps and removing them. So my most proximal ligature, the one closest to the cervix, is going to be a circumferential. Using a surgeon's knot. I'm just going to go ahead, pass this around my uterine body. Do a surgeon's throw. Tighten this. And as I'm tightening, remove this first clamp, the most proximal clamp, so I can tie in the area that's crushed by that clamp. You can see sometimes the suture isn't quite big enough to resist the um, the tension of this tubing. So you really wanna make sure when you pull this that it stays tightened. So sometimes you have to sort of hold it for a little bit in order to prevent it from loosening. Now, as I said, the suture isn't quite appropriate for this, so I'm just gonna keep moving on for the sake of the demonstration, but you would not want it to release like that. Now you can see that it's slid down quite well and actually has created a nice ligature, a nice tight knot, all right. So I'm going to do two throws there, three, four, These tags are a little bit longer than I'd like them. So typically you want them, as I said, three to five millimeters. Those are probably closer to five to six. So I'll just trim them up a little bit. Probably better to leave them a little longer than too short because too short puts them at risk for if that top knot comes undone um, then having that ligature be a little bit less secure. All right so next I'm going to do my transfixing ligature. This is going to be placed between the most proximal ligature and that middle clamp now the most proximal clamp left. So when we do this we want to pass the needle through the uterine body. Your vessels are going to be on the lateral aspects or your uterine artery and vein, you'll have one running on the left and one on the right. And so what I like to do is sort of lift up my uterine body so it's perpendicular to pass my needle. So I'm not passing my needle in towards the abdomen and then coming around. This way I avoid penetrating those vessels and creating bleeding. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my first of my transfix. You can see I've left this tag a little long and that's so I can pass it around the uterine body. So the first throw I'm gonna make is just a square throw, and that's only meant to fix this suture to the tissue itself. It doesn't need to be super tight, that's fine. It will tighten when we pass our, when we make our next throw, which is a surgeon's throw, everything will continue to tighten down. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I've made that first square throw. That's not part of your final knot. It's just, again, to fix the suture to that tissue. I'm gonna pass this 
long tag all the way around the uterine body. I'm going to go of it. Sometimes it's going to be a little annoying and want to come back through. You can have your assistant grab hold of it as needed to keep it in place. So now that's passed around and I'm going to do a surgeon's throw and grab that tag and I'm going to tighten this. You do want this to tighten perpendicular to the long axis of your uterine body and I'm going to pull this nice and tight. Now just like with the ovarian pedicle, if this clamp is too close to this, what you're going to have to do is have your assistant open up or flash this as you're tightening. I'm just going to open that up and you can see I can get this a lot tighter and I'm going to hold it nice and tight and I would have my assistant reclamp as I'm holding this tight. Since I don't have an assistant, I'm going to have to reclamp it on my own. Pull this nice and tight. And then Now the risk, if you don't flash, is that this is going to be a loose transfi transfixing ligature. So I'm going to zoom in for you here. If I can, I think that's as zoomed as I can get. But I'll lift this up. And what we're looking for, again, is to see a nice waste and blanching of the tissue. Obviously, this is not live tissue. It's tubing, so we're not going to see blanching. But there is a waste there. And you can evaluate the other surface. I'm going to rotate this around. Sometimes it's a little bit easier. See. So is that as tight as I want it to be? Nope. But without an assistant here to keep that clamp open as I tighten this, it's probably not going to get any tighter. So what you really wanted to see uh, is see a nice waist as to ensure that that is a nice tight ligature. All right. I'm going to go ahead and place two more square throws. Go ahead and cut this. And now I'm ready to go ahead and transect my uterine body. So again, this is my cervix. This is coming up to my uterine horns, attached to my ovaries. And I'm gonna to wanna to transect between my two clamps. So you should always be cutting between two clamps, whether it be on the uterine body or the ovarian pedicles. If you're only left with one clamp, Certainly there's something that's gone awry, or if you have two clamps left, remember you don't want to be cutting here or here, always cut between them. So you can use a blade or scissors. Now I can go ahead and remove my reproductive tract from the field and set it off to the back of my table. I'm gonna go ahead, grab this, release my clamp, inspect it, make sure I'm happy with my ligatures, make sure there's no bleeding, and then release that back into the body.